Greetings, everyone. It is I, your one and only host, the Cosmic Jedi. Welcome back to my channel. It's, of course, another trailer reaction day, and today we have Zack Snyder, director's cut for the Rebel Moon. And boy, I have no energy for this i just want to see what he's going to throw in this time i don't even think i remember the other previous trailers at all the, the first one and the second one i don't know if he's combined both trailers this time as one whole trailer for part one and part two director scott at least he's still going along with it that's one thing i, I can give the guys kudos to say hey despite most of us or some of us saying we don't really care about this this um franchise or this story or don't really care much for rebel moon i'm wondering what Zach is going to do next. I don't know if Zach's going to take a chill pill or still continue to to create. And I can't knock him down for that, to be honest. Despite people saying, yeah, movie was trash. I didn't really like it. Got to give him kudos. I can, I can learn from him or we can all learn from him as, you know, you could say he's delusional. Whatever you say, he seems satisfied. Netflix still seems to be cool with the deal to go along to allow him to then release the director's cut. Nothing else I can say about it, to be honest. Thumbs up to the guy, man. He's still pushing through and pushing along. In a reality, in, in a reality where we exist, where we're seeing trash shows or trash Star Wars shows like The Acolyte and Rebel Moon not really becoming what a lot of us were hoping it would become, I think you can all learn from that. Me, personally, as a creator, despite how you want to look at what's going on right now, it's cool to see someone who says he believes in his vision so much. And there must be a small pocket of people who still enjoyed Rebel Moon nonetheless. Despite one or two issues or a number or a plethora of issues, they were still satisfied with the outcome and they're still loyal, full supporters of Zack Snyder. I support Zack. I wouldn't say I'm a full, loyal supporter. But prior to this project, I can't remember the exact ones that I really enjoyed from him, but I know Man of Steel stands out. That's still one of my... Oh, um, Man of Steel 300 and Watchmen. Those three, I enjoyed it very much. If I was to rank them, my most enjoyed movie-going experience from Zack Snyder. Man of Steel is number one. 300 is number two. Watchmen is number three. I enjoyed Watchmen. There were a few weird, you know, scenes. Like, if you remove those scenes, the movie would still be sweet. Those, those scenes just slowed down the pacing. But yeah, Man of Steel number one. 300 number two for sure. And then Watchmen number three. I really enjoyed Man of Steel and 300. For sure, really, really thoroughly enjoyed them. As a whole package, beginning, middle, and end, without skipping a few scenes, that, that's my go those are my go-to movies for Zack Snyder. Whereas with Watchmen, I'll skip a few scenes, for sure. Anyway, without further ado, let us begin this trailer reaction to The Rebel Moon, director Scott. Enough of my yappa jibba jabba. Let's go. That's new. Also new. I might have to blur it out on YouTube, man. Okay, we're gonna have to blur a few things out on YouTube. This is a bit much. At least I die on the side of honor. Is there still such a thing? Oh, that's very new. Their wrath will be my vengeance. The 
the director's cut, Rebel Moon. Chapter 1, Chalice of Blood. Chapter 2, Curse of Forgiveness. One thing I can give Zack Snyder, aside from the visuals of his um, projects, is he knows how to cut a good trailer, for sure. If I hadn't seen the first two Rebel Moons, I would have thought to myself, this looks like it's, an epic, it's going to be an epic experience. But after seeing it, watching different shots or different clips that weren't included in the first showings it's, it doesn't change the pacing or the stupid decisions that were made by characters that didn't make sense um scenes where non-armored warriors were standing in, in plain line of sight of armored warriors with guns that if you pop one shot it's bound you know to pierce through they didn't they did they have bullets they don't like they had bullets it looked like it was they were firing lasers think of their guns with inbuilt um lightsaber bullets for like a better term after witnessing scenes like that where they brought five men with those laser guns on a bridge versus two men unarmored but you can have five men on the bridge in line of sight. Not like there were five men doing different things off screen in line of sight. And they showed the side view. They didn't show. I mean, they gave one or two shots as from the perspective of the non-armored warriors and then perspective of the armored warriors. And if you look clearly, if you pay enough attention, you will know they're in front of each other. And yet all those bullets missed the two non-armored warriors. That did not make any sense if you're starting to say it's um old school weapons like spares or primitive not primitive um original weapons like spares bow and arrow and in whatever tomahawks versus futuristic weapons there are ways you can still shoot those scenes to make it look epic but zach really 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 screwed up those scenes because it's, it's insulting to the viewers we're looking at the thing thinking okay you know you 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 would have been dead two seconds ago and this scene is going on for like five minutes. They should have been dead on paper. Now you could, you could say you could use a, uh, you could use that same premise for every movie. Yes, there are a lot of movies you can watch with action scenes where if you say if you really observe it, remove the action spectacle and the slow mo and and the the stunt work, that guy would have been really hurt by now. Just like John Wick Four, for example, there was a lot of scenes where I was like, dude. This is why you should have left it at John Wick or John Wick 2. Between 1, 2, and 3, you should have left it somewhere. 4? The fourth one, again, you're insulting the viewers because we can clearly see at this point, it's like, yo, he should have been dead by now. Next scene, should have been dead by now. Another scene, oh, he should have been dead. And you don't want your viewers to start thinking that when they're watching your movie. You, you want it to be like a close call, like, ooh, he just about missed. He would have been shot dead. It's a good thing someone hit him or it's a good thing he got, you know? You want you want to you want to make it look like it's a clean cut escape, it's just so close each time, different times, and sometimes he gets hurt, just like the John Wick two. Well, between one and three, there are times that he, 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 you know, he's shown hurt, he's patching himself up, or he's going to, you know, the guy who played the keymaker to patch him up. He's going through a process of wound and heal, wound and heal, but the consistency of damage taken to the body, and no, um no show of slowing down or let me take a chill pill or you know just just acknowledgement of self and to the audience like yo i think homeboy might need to just let this one slide this time and just say maybe maybe right maybe part five i'll come back for revenge so scenes like that really take you know viewers out some viewers are, like i said there's some people who don't mind they will literally shut their brain down and they can afford to hey, hey, just watch the movie cool all right cool did you just Use his eye to block a bullet, even though he's not superhuman. Say less. And John Wick and this movie aren't gimmicky movies. They're not um, Kung Fu Hustle-like movies. And, and that's no shade to Kung Fu Hustle either. That was a beautiful movie. But what I'm saying is they're set up as serious movies. And that's just one thing I, I brought up with, um, with Rebel Moon, with the with the choreography of the of the fight scene or the, the gun versus not weapon wielding versus non-weapon wielding that's just one scene out of a plethora of other scenes there's another scene where there was a villain on the floor and people were just ignoring the villain and doing damage everywhere else and then the villain decided to take flight then at that point is when one of the people just fighting decided to jump on the ship that was taking flight with the villain on board i was like dude 
you had ample opportunity to take this guy out. So when you write scenes like that, people like us would just, we, we, we see it quick. We spot it quick. Like, dude, why is, why is your main villain on the ground and no one is taking shots at the, if people took shots at the villain and he took down each and every one of them, that's different because that's, you're acknowledging to us, the viewers, that the people in this story are presently and currently aware that that's the main villain that they, they want to exact their revenge on. But they don't know that he's super juiced up this time and he could take them out one by one or, you know, or multiple targets simultaneously. But no one came at him whilst things were going on around him. No one registered in their mind. That's the main uh, prick, the main reason why we're at war with, with this empire thing. And it wasn't like he showed up behind them. He was in clear sight, line of sight. They came out of whatever and saw him, but it's like they just focus and they saw him and they said, okay, start destroying things around us. That's, that's poor um, storytelling because now we're thinking, okay, you could have written the scene in such a way where damage was being taken by the soldiers because the rebels are fighting back. Then the main guy comes to the ground and says, okay, you know, like one of those generals, I don't need to sit down in my chair and watch my soldiers fight the war i like to be in the heat of battle as well i don't really care for this man will i watch it i don't know to be honest i don't know because i don't know what he's going to change or if he sh ah. now i'm thinking to myself so what did you what did you release to us in the first place because we watched two movies man two stories part one and part two so now what are you trying to tell us this time with director scott and with the different scenes and, and shots how are you going to rearrange your entire movies you're two hours and a half or an hour an hour and a half each what could you possibly do this time around that's going to change the whole experience we had the first time around that's like saying you're going to release the director's cut of the matrix and then i mean i'll i'll watch that i'll definitely watch that but i, I i'm i'm curious to see what they would have changed and added will, will the director's cut remove some of the scenes we fell in love with in Matrix and change the dialogue or will it add to some of the scenes we fell in love with and add to the dialogue or would they add one or two new characters? And then if it's adding one or two new characters, then how long do those characters survive the movie or how long do they stay on screen? Because if, if, if you're saying they release, let's say they release the director's cut of Matrix 1, 2, and 3 or 4, 1 to 4, and you're saying it's an hour extra... Even if you say it's 30, extra 30 minutes of footage of, of this film. Okay, let's say it's an hour extra footage of a film for each chapter. What difference will, will an hour make to the outcome of the whole story? Because you still show the, 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 the main boss fighting the, um, the Scargiver girl. And then I assume he wants to finish the whole story because we still haven't um, found out what happened to to the the little princess. We still haven't found out what happened to the guy who is in between Limbo that brought back the boss from the first movie. Yeah, I'm done, man. I'm so upset. I didn't know I'd be this pissed. I didn't intend to record this video for this long either. God damn it, Zach. Zach, dude, man, what is homeboy doing? What is this? So you, you change, unless I miss something the first time I watched these, the, the first two movies, I don't remember them being called Chalice of Blood and Curse of, of, of for Forgiveness. I don't know why I can't say that straight without, without fumbling it. God damn it. You have to wield a very great wand and, and cast a very great spell to make people forget the first two, because I can go and watch the first two right now. And maybe I might do that. At least he's doing us a favor this time and dropping both chapter one and two all at once, rather than making us wait till you drop it in August and then drop the other one in November or December. I don't know what you, what he's doing. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't see how the, the, it'll change the whole experience. The story remains the same. Their, their motive was, was stupid in terms of, of the, the, the boss and looking for the grain. Ah, oh, you could have had, you could have told a better story, man. You're creating a world that everyone is saying, oh, it's similar to Star Wars um, universe. You could have told a better story because a lot of people did break it down. And I can't remember the, the you know, the main bits of the breakdowns, but a lot of people are saying, well, the grain thing doesn't make sense. Um, you know, the, the, the revival that, uh, then apparently the, 
the scene where the scar is touching this huge titanic looking or titan looking creature apparently they're they're deities and gods and goddesses in the story which he didn't even you know he, he didn't want us to see the first time he dropped it so it's like he didn't have enough confidence in the first two chapters he released either that or it's just a gimmick but why why are you doing that to your audience surely as a storyteller your skill is to tell stories and and in and create worlds and universes where people get involved in and they can see themselves in learn morals from the, from the story they connect to it and you know, they, they heal just by watching that's the whole point of storytelling just by hearing stories it transforms each and every one of us in different ways stories touch us in different ways they're they're very powerful stories and they're movies where it's like oh you don't need to there's no moral here it's just for fun and there's nothing wrong with that either every you know see movies as different fruits you, there's fruits you like there's fruits people prefer you take what what suits you you know horror movies gore and all that there's so many things added to enjoy so now it's like well wh what does zach want to tell us with this what is the point of the story because you can you, ah oh shit as a visual spectacle it looks nice but it, your, it still doesn't change the way your story was told the first time around unless you're going to rearrange a few things and swap out characters that's a different story entirely if you're swapping out characters rearranging the whole thing and your your drive or your um the 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 main reason for the story to exist and then multiple stories going on at the same time so if if you, if, if he was saying he was doing a prequel to the daughter and the the person who set up the scar giver maybe i might be interested in that but it, it, oh shit man and then if you threw in the gods and goddesses in that world cool and then we get to see more robot action as well i might be i might be i might be you know um, up for that one rather than this this is a waste of time what in fact that would have been the best thing to do that would have been the best thing to do i think you just tell us the story right from the start so that way we would have gotten to this point not the director's cut the other two that were released the first two rebel moon chapters that were released we'd have been on board by then because you'd have introduced us to ray fish's character the rebel the rebel squad um their journey you'd, you'd have given us a backstory for their journey You'd have given us a backstory for all the other different warriors that came together. So you'd have probably done like five movies straight, maybe six to seven movies in total. And I'm not saying you want a backstory, a backstory movie for each character, but if each movie had two character um, story arcs we're, we're experiencing, or three each, yeah, three, T two to three. And then we're getting back and forth scenes of the, the Empire, the King and Queen, and then the... Um, the daughter and even a lot of people were, were destroying the story arc of the king and queen after enslaving nations and, and planets across the, across the cosmos then they realized okay they just decided to say we're going to stop now we're, we're now a beacon of light when i watched that breakdown it just made his whole story look stupid it is really it and that's something i missed that is something that's why i love watching these breakdowns so now when you watch that you just sit down and think well what, now what's again like i said what's the point of your story when someone can just tear down your story like that and say, and if you're saying it's a it's a parallel to our current situation as human beings, and it's it's a allegory for um corruption, governance, or the government, or they see that now, then that's like oh it's 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 he's dropping a message to the masses through these two movies, but there's still cleaner ways you could have expressed that message without us having to double or triple take. A lot of people well it depends i think over time some people i'm not saying everyone but some people caught wind of or finally understood what the star wars story was about when people were you know comparing uh the story to um nations and nazi and whatnot i didn't see that i, I didn't see it at, at the early stage or whatever age i was conscious enough to enjoy star wars the original star wars i didn't see that whole allegory going on so maybe, you know, not everyone will catch on to the story, but this one, I, I just came to do a trailer reaction now and do a whole little rant. I don't care, man. I'm I'm really trying to figure out in my mind right now, will I watch this? Yes or no? For this, for this, for the scenes and the shots, I probably will. But to hold on to it and say, let me watch it again and watch the story. You know what? I only just jump on board and just watch the new scenes because the other scenes, when they hit 
they will just irritate my mind and it, it'll remind me that I'm not watching to take this information in to enjoy it because I was already pissed off from the last two experiences. So I'm just here for the new scenes and new shots and see what else he's done and how he's done it. Maybe I can learn from this dude and, and, and know how to tell my stories in the future so I don't do the director's cut of nonsense. And even at that, how bad was your original vision that Netflix would have said, don't release that because we don't allow that. And then, oh my God, I was even thinking Netflix, they, he had a disagreement with Netflix and said, no, you can't release the movie as is. Maybe someone needs to educate me on, on, on what a director's cut is supposed to be. Is it that the studio says you can't release this like this, recut it again, and then what we've gotten is what the, the studios studio has stated. And then because of popularity, studios made money from the movie. Then the studio has given permission to the director to say, okay, that original vision you had, now you can release it. And then, then it's called the director's cut, you, you know? I don't get it. Maybe I should just Google it so, so it's, easier on, it's easy on my mind. But... I don't care, man. Just I'm trying to figure out, is it that Netflix told him don't release it as you've shown it to us originally, then he's gone back to recut it, and then that recut is what we got the first time around, part one and part two. And then because it got some popularity and people talking about it negatively or positively, then Netflix is like, okay, thumbs up. Now you can release your original vision for it. Or is it that Zach said, I'm going to shoot it like this and chop it up like this, release one, um, chill for a while and then release part two, chill for a while and then re -re or release it again as a director's cut, part one and two, all in one go. Is so now it's it's like which which one is it? Netflix said no, or this is Zach, this is all Zach's doing from beginning to end. There was no problem between Zach and Netflix. God damn it! Thirty minutes long video with this bullshit, which I will watch just to see the new scenes. God man. I don't know where that love for storytelling has gone with him. Talking to your audience through your movies, through your story, through through your characters. What what are you trying? What are you communi What are you telling us this time around? And not every director has to have a story. But there are people who love your Tarantino's, your Christopher Nolan. So everyone has their little directors that they like, male or female directors, the genre that they really like. But what is what is Zach's place now? Because you've made movies that people are like, dude, it's not even fun to shit on any director, any human being. But the more you're pumping out things that we're looking forward to seeing, and when we go and see them, we're like, what the hell did we just watch? Someone just broke down your story saying your empire means nothing, especially when you're trying to portray this king and queen as they're more common now. They've been causing disorder and disharmony across the cosmos, and then one day, an epiphany. After you've you've killed a lot of people, enslaved a lot of people, you've pumped fear into the cosmos. Now we're this beacon of light and hope, and our daughter is semi-immortal. Again, what story are you trying to tell? Are you saying this is what government looks like? Monarchy looks like? Are you being specific with the British monarchy? What what is it? What and if all if we all collectively don't get it and we're all having our own different opinions or thoughts on the matter, then you haven't been clear and direct enough as a director saying this is the message in my story. Or maybe you could argue there is no message. It's just stuff I've thrown on the screen. Then dude, you're insulting your viewers because you didn't release, you didn't just come out and say this is for free by sending emails or a free link to everyone's email address who subscribed to Zack Snyder's website to watch it for free. This is a paid subscription platform you released your movies on and you're drawing time, uh, money, and our attention. No one wants to feed or pay you our attention for stupidity. And even if you, you're, you're telling us a dark story, some people are, are mature enough for dark stories and they will look for the light within your dark stories. What is your end, end game? What are you trying to tell us? What are you reminding us of? What are you teaching us? Are you healing us with your movie? Are you telling us this dark story so we can learn to heal from these, from our personal experiences, you know? But you've got characters on the screen where I can relate to that character. Or I can relate to that character. I can draw courage from this character. I can see how this character navigated their their trauma or, or, or their challenges and became stronger for it. Instead, you just drop all this nonsense and it's all visual spectacle. Key point is now like, is now what do you want to... What relationship do you want us to have with you now, Zack Snyder? Because... 
I would not like to be in his shoes, create something with joy and excitement and hope, release it only for people to just shit on it because you've insulted their time. You're excited as a director. We want to feel that excitement. But when we're watching your thing, we're asking questions. Anyway, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm definitely done. It's like I'm talking to him as, as if he's watching my videos. Anyway, let me know. Remember, watch the first two um, Rebel Moon movies. Did you like them? Did you dislike them? Are you going to watch this director's cut or this re-release, whatever it is? Who is interested? Who is curious? Let a brother know in the comments. I have been your one and only host, the Cosmic Jedi. Signing out. Thank you for watching. Thank you.